more compelling, or more sacred than that of protecting the climate of our planet for our children and grandchildren. There is a quote from Christina Figuere, Executive Secretary of the UNFCCC, or United Framework Convention of Climate Change. Chances are the topic of climate change is enough for you. You've had it drilled into your heads over and over again. You can look anywhere and see information on it. But if so many people are talking about it, then why is it still an issue? The definition of climate change, according to NASA, is simply just a change in the usual climate of a place. Now it mostly refers to the average temperature of the Earth raising and leaving astronomical implications on the environment and society. Today I'm here to inform you who, on the true importance of climate change as well as what you can do to help. This is a topic I believe is very important and so do you simply because it's global. It involves everyone. I will be discussing the importance of this, counter arguments against those statements, solutions, as well as what the world would look like if we did not fix this issue in time. Now, why is it such a prominent issue? Let's we'll start with what exactly climate change means for our world today. Climate change is caused by a buildup of heat trapping greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, such as methane or carbon dioxide, aka CO2. The World Wildlife Fund states that there has been an increase of greenhouse gases due from breeding methane producing animals, such as cows, burning huge amounts of fossil fuels and deforestation, which removes a natural absorbent of carbon dioxide. NASA states that much of the evidence for global warming comes from global temperatures rising, glacial retreat, ocean acidification, and extreme weather events. So climate is changing, but why should you care? Well, this directly affects the food we have available to us. An EPA report states that climate change leads to more extreme rainfall patterns, meaning more flooding and droughts, which in turn means that we have reduced, reduced the yield of crops. Livestock are also put at risk due to this reduced fuel supply and increased heat stress. Heat stress. A UN report from August of this year states that we have a 2030 deadline to reduce our emissions and to avoid dangerous climate changes. We have a 35 gigaton limit on emissions in order to stabilize our climate. And if the Paris Agreement from a few years ago, a few years ago was followed, we're still set to be 23 gigatons above that limit by 2030. So there's plenty of evidence for climate change and its debilitating effects. However, even with that, there are still those who doubt that it's even a problem. Doubters of climate change which will argue against the claims that it's important or even exists at all, but those can easily be refuted. One argument against climate change is that the Earth's temperature has, has always risen and lowered, and the current rise is within the bounds of our current fluctuations. Another argument is that the CO2 released is reabsorbed by natural carbon sinks, such as oceans and forests, negating any possible changes. Well, according to NASA, while there are natural rises and falls of temperature, the current rise has more than a 95% chance of being from human activities. The World Wildlife Fund also states that deforestation, which not only removes one of our carbon sinks, also releases CO2, only adding to the problem. Many of the arguments against the case can be easily refuted and debunked, just like the two examples I have shown here. This sense you can't deny that climate change is a problem, but it's time to learn what you can do to help. One approach, as stated by National Geographic, is the wedge strategy. It describes several wedges or ways that to reduce emissions, altogether keeping our temperature stable for the next 50 years. Wedges include, or some of the wedges include higher energy efficiency, vehicle fuel economy, more renewable resources, and a further use of fossil fuels. According to davidsuzuki.org, on a government level, we need to push for lower methane emissions from fracked gas and push for more renewable energy. As far as what you can do for yourself, you can use a greener commute option, such as carpooling or public transportation, use energy more wisely, try to, wi or try to waste less food and water. Pushing your state and national government for changes, as well as taking local steps within your community, is an important way to reduce our emissions before the deadline. In a world where climate change isn't looming over our heads, many things can be improved. But what would the world be like if we didn't fix this issue in time? Going back to that mentioned review and report, we need to lower our emissions by 50 to 80% before the deadline, or else the global temperature may continue to rise to one half to a full degree. Um, obviously, that doesn't sound like that much of a difference. But one half of a degree, that could be really important. An IPCC report states that there's a huge difference between a world that is 1.5 versus 2 degrees higher than what it was in 1990. For reference, we are currently about 1 degree higher. There would be a higher spread of diseases, such as malaria, and they state that the proportion of people exposed to heat waves at least once every five years would be 
from 14 to 37 percent. So even if one to two degrees doesn't seem like a problem, the effect on lives is too big to ignore. In conclusion, climate change is a problem that affects everything, whether it's the environment or ecosystem the animal lives in, or simple, simply the everyday life of you and those around you. There's plenty of proof on the effects of, of climate change, and everyone can do something to help prevent the disastrous effects in our future. This isn't something get, that can be pushed off or ignored any longer. We each need to go out and do our own parts to address this, the limit threat posed by climate change. Once again, we only have 12 years to reduce our emissions by 50 to 80 percent. This directly affects the world we're going to live in as we grow old, and no one is excluded.